Today I'm using the analog discovery to experiment with a linear technologies LTC 1060. What that is, is uh, it's called a universal dual filter building block, but basically it's a switched capacitor filter that uh, it contains two separate filter elements and of course they can be connected together. The circuit that I'm using is is out of the linear technology uh, specification or data sheet. Show you a little bit more of what's going on here. This is a, a gain of 1000 fourth order bandpass filter and the the bandpass is around 175 hertz fundamentally what this is are two filter sections the left side is one filter section the right side is the other essentially there's some pins that are like uh, vcc and ground but but the active uh, or filter pins one set is on one side one set is on the other so for example you see this filter network here and the input coming in and the output coming from this uh, filter section so basically it comes into this filter section comes around goes through this filter section and comes out uh, we'll look at the block diagram in just a second but I just wanted to talk about the basics of this kind of a filter you may notice down here it has a clock that uh, we can zoom in a little better there. The clock in is at 17 and a half uh, kilohertz and this is operating off a uh, single supply. In other words I have 5 volts connected to VCC and then ground, no negative 5 volts. This will work off of supplies as low as plus or minus uh, oh, a little under 3 volts to up to plus and minus 5 volts. So let's take a look at the analog discovery and then we'll come back and look at the block diagram of this, uh, of this circuit. Over here is the analog discovery and let me show you a little bit. I'm using the power supply down there. I'm using waveform 2 to generate the clock at 17 and a half kilohertz. And then here you see the network analyzer And on the left is 20 hertz, and on the right is 1 kilohertz. This is the passband. The, uh, this uh, line here is about minus 53 dB, and this line is about plus 3 dB. So uh, it's essentially about a 60 dB uh, from the baseline to the peak of the uh, filter response. Now you'll notice the phase does some funny things. This is partly due to the fact that we are using both a sampled scope and a sampled filter. In other words the digital filter sample and the uh, scope uh, samples are not synchronized. So the, the phase shift <laughs> depends on where you are in the, in the particular uh, sample cycle. So I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to this phase response in this particular case. The, uh, but watch what happens with the, the frequency response. See we get a fairly sharp uh, peak. This is about 150 
of Hertz. And this point is about probably 220 Hertz. So you see it's a little sharper on the upside than it is on the downside. So now let's take a look at the block diagram of the, uh, of the 1060. You can see that the, uh, the chip is basically split along this line. And everything up here is the same as everything down here. So, so that I can get a little bit bigger picture, I'm just going to focus on the bottom half and zoom in a little more on that. The, uh, the basic way that this, that this unit works is it uses a switched capacitor uh, arrangement with a summer. In other words, you you imply uh, you in, uh, input the the signal, and then what it does is it constantly switches between the output and ground here, and and the summer then produces a signal that, in essence, produces the bandpass output. Now, we're, we're bringing the bandpass out of 19. This is actually the second filter section. So we're using the filter section at the top uh, from, for the input, and then we're coupling it to this filter section and bringing the output out through pin 19. So, as you can see, this type of filter uses uh, switching, switched uh, capacitors. So, or I should say switching, uh, uh, it uses uh, storage, capacitive storage. The whole idea is that unlike the universal active filter that we looked at in the previous video that is purely analog, this one is actually digital and it does require the clock and it does have some of the drawbacks of using a clock. Well, some of the drawbacks are that uh, you introduce additional noise into your system because that clock gets into the VCC and ground. Uh, it, uh, it's not a high frequency clock. It's only about uh, 10 times the input frequency, but it, it still is there. And so while this can be a useful way of sampling, particularly if you're doing data sampling where you can synchronize your clocks, it's not generally uh, used where you have unsynchronized signals. In other words, where you have, for example, an audio signal or a baseband signal coming in off of a system and you do not have any kind of clock recovery to enable you to synchronize your system clock. So let's take one last look at the response and the circuit. And as I pointed out, clock at the bottom, output from the uh, first section, which comes in over here, is coupled through this 3.3. This is actually, I'm using a 3.3K. And, and that's one thing. I'm just using basic 5% uh, resistors here. So uh, while this calls, this design actually calls for a 3.16K, I actually have a 3.3K in there and similarly the uh, this resistor is also a 3.3k so so that will raise the uh, the filter frequency slightly but fundamentally it's a switched capacitor filter it's called a differential dual filter uh, building block and it's made by linear technologies the LTC 1060 so uh, I just thought I might do this one. I'm going to do another linear technology filter uh, at some in some future video, and I just wanted this one to sort of sit halfway in between the UAF 42 that we did in a previous video and what we do in that one. So I hope this has been uh, instructive. If you haven't heard of these sorts of things, you might want to take a look at them. There, of course, you can go on the website and download these data sheets and uh, examine them. They have a wealth of information. 
They can be useful in some applications, but uh, in all candor, they're not as useful as uh, some other designs that uh, we may look at in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll look forward to some more videos. And as I usually say, in the meantime, have a nice day.